was it a difficult decision to come back? Well, yeah, it took me all of two minutes, I think, when I spoke to Julian. But uh, no, in all honesty, um, I got a, I got a call um, sort of middle of afternoon, and a couple of people had texted me and said, unfortunately, obviously Gary uh, Gary um, left his post, and then uh, you know my agent rung me and asked me if I would be, you know, does he want to make a call? I think he actually had another manager as well that he was going to put a call into Julian about. Uh, and yeah, and then it just snowballed from there. I spoke to Julian about an hour later. Agreed to, I thought even, I think it was about a two minute phone call to be honest. Um, and then, you know, he, he was talking about coming in on Thursday, maybe if it's if it's getting sorted. There was a couple of things I need to, you know, that was taught maybe, you know, was it just coming short term, which Julian said that was never going to be his, uh, <clears throat> his, his offer. So that was that, I, I needed to bring Kenny in which was um, another thing. And obviously I wanted to make it from Julian's point of view, he, you know, spoke to Stefan about it and, you know, 100%. So, yeah, it was dead simple. And then uh, in straight away on uh, Tuesday morning to, to get cracking. Obviously, the squad has changed a lot mm. since you were last year. The, the ownership of the club has changed to some extent. How, how well do you know the squad that are here now? Do you know any of them? Uh, yeah, I know a few. Um, obviously on deadline day, it, I won't say there's a slight imbalance to the squad, but there's, you know, I think we brought two wide men in. Um, allied to the four, that that's already so we've got like six wide men, a few midfield players in there, maybe a little bit similar. It's a big squad, um, probably too big if I'm honest. Um, but you know, hopefully everyone will get their opportunity and take it when it comes along. But um, yeah, I know, I know, I know a few of the lads. There's some I, I don't know at all, but I've had one to ones with them. Obviously, there's you know all the clips on the on the uh, analysis which we've been looking at um, and it's it's we've just got to get down to assessing the players as quickly as we can where they think they see themselves the best position because I know Gary's changed the foot like I've done many a time changed the formation a few times and played a three played a two played a four played a five whatever it may be so um, I think you've got to try to get the players um, you know in the best positions if we can and you know take it from there. When you started your second spell here at Bradford you said you'd learnt a lot in the intervening years from the first spell. What have you learnt this time? In the 18 months or so? Yeah, well, I've learnt being out of game for eight months. Didn't great, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, I was just delighted to get to get the call. But oh, yeah, listen, you're always learning. I was at yesterday down at St George's with a lot of the, you know, league managers. You know, from the through the LMA and you know, listening to, you know, um, Steve Holland. Um, Gareth's assistant who put a coaching drill on it and then Gareth himself. You're always learning. You know, you've got people like Steve McLaren there and Sammy Lee and, and, and the likes, you know, asking questions and you know, they're learning, even at their experience here. So um you're always learning. What I, I what I've learned um myself, no, I, I just I, I just want to get, you know, into the mindsets of the players. Um because naturally, when I think we've gone seven games without victory, you know, there's a little bit of dipping confidence, which is is natural for anyone. Um, so it's about lifting them um, and getting them feeling good about themselves. We've had a, a good session out there today, which was really pleasing. Uh, and then come Saturday, I mean, we had 24 out there today training, one of the young lads and a trialer. So we actually had 22 outfield players. So you know, that goes to say there's, there's going to be six not even involved. You know, getting stripped on uh, on Saturday, so that's uh, the difficult part. Um, but as I said, you know, if you're not involved, you do your best to to get involved. You know, be it in training, be it coming off the bench, or when you start, you can always play yourself into the team. But likewise, you know, you can play yourself out of it. So if you get your opportunity, grab it, take it, and uh, make the best of it. As you said, it's a big squad, maybe too big. Any worries about coming in though when the transfer window's just closed and you have to deal with these players now? That's yeah, right. no, not at all, no. Um, obviously, you know, the ones I, I actually quite know, I know. Well, I don't, and Dylan Motley Henry played my young lad when he was here in the 15, 16s. I saw a little bit of him, obviously, he's filled out since. I had Noves at, at Scunthorpe. Um, I know a lot about Glenn Middleton, who's come from Rangers naturally. Didn't know a lot about Curtis, but I've been, you know, looked up him. Spoke to a couple of managers at the LMA yesterday and you know about some of our players that we've got, which was helpful, Paul Hurst and, and the likes of that. Um, so no, but it is about myself and Kenny 
listening to the members of the staff as well, what they think, watching as much footage as we can, but really getting on that training pitch and seeing what they can do and what they can't do. And um, it's, We've got 15 games left, we've got to do it quickly, uh, but it's it's a great challenge that we're up for. And you like to play attacking football, is that... I presume something that's not going to change. Uh, yeah, again, same conversations I had when I came before. Um, much rather win 5-4 than 1-0. The goalie coach closes his ears to that, the, the goalkeepers do. But yeah, we've, we've got to uh, play in a manner and a style that we're, 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 we're trying to create opportunities, trying to put the ball in the box, you know, shots at goal, get the supporters off the seats, you know, and uh, don't always happen, but that's the way, you know, I think football should be played, and we will try to try to do that, and you know, hopefully, it'll bring the success that we we're after. And how well do you know the league too this season? The other teams in the league too. Well, I, I've I've seen a couple of games. I've not seen many. Um, Kenny, funny enough, he's been. Um, he lives around the man's. He's seen a few Mansfield games. Um, he's been in that. Um, Greg's been to a few games. I speak to Greg as well. Uh, but um, no, I know there's a obviously the. There's a few up there that I've, I know a lot about, but in general, I've not seen a lot of football. But I do believe, again, speaking to people yesterday and trying to get as much information as I can, there's a, you know, a lot of teams that do like to play. Um, it's not just crash bang wallet football. But then again, you know, the pitches are declining at this time of year, and um, you know, we, you have to do what's the most effective. So, Stuart, having to jet up on a, a score as quickly as you're having to do that, that must be quite a new thing for yourself because you haven't got sort of a summer to build yeah. up gradually. Yeah, listen, I think any any manager would say an ideal time to come in is in the close season. You know, you can build your own squad, you can get you get what, probably four or five weeks to work with them without the pressure of trying to get a result. You can try different things. Um, obviously, in the summer, the weather's better, you're doing double sessions and things like that. So you get more time on the, on the training ground to actually get your, your methods over. But yeah, it, it's a challenge, and as I said, I think you'll, I look at the squad, and you, know, you can actually see there's six wingers in there. There's you know a, a lot of similarity in midfield players. There's a few number tens. There's a strikers would probably you know defensive wise um, okay. Obviously, um, Kelvin's out injured at the moment, um, but other than that, but it is a, it is a big squad, and I think as I said, they've all trained well today. Um, there'll be a few very disappointing not to start on Saturday, but they'll be even more so disappointing not even to be in the 18, having not really done anything wrong. But that's that's the size of the squad we've got, and it's then managing the ones that are not involved, which becomes a, the difficult and you, they've got to keep them part of it. And you you know you, you know it's their job then to to do everything they can to get in the 18. And if you're in your 18 and you're not in the 11, you've got to do everything you can to get in that 11. And uh, so it's it's good, it's competitive, strong competition for places. Um, and that's, you know, hopefully that all goes well for the future. But, you know, it, it can be a difficulty sometimes with having too many bodies. So about obviously lifting the morale within the group a little bit. Obviously, the fact that this Saturday the buzz about the ground is going to be a lot more positive than perhaps it, it has been of, of late. So yeah. Is it a case of do you use that emotion or do you sort of try and not be carried away? Like no, I think I think hopefully the players will will rise to it. I think you only have to look at his opponents in Grimsby. Um, you know what what Ian's gone in and done there. He's lifted the place. I believe they're bringing almost three thousand. I'm sure if Ian hadn't been in charge and the lift they've had, they won't be bringing anything like that. I wouldn't imagine. But I know they've got a good travelling support. So, you know they're buoyant at the moment. He's gone in there with his infectious nature, um, great experience and great knowledge and and. Got not only the the results but the performance have lifted hugely. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's going to be a really good occasion. But they're only good occasions if you win. You're going to sleep well tomorrow. Yeah, I will sleep well tomorrow. I'm not so sure about Saturday. I never sleep after a game, win, lose or draw. But um, yeah, because I'll go go to bed tomorrow night in the knowledge that the team's been selected, the formation's been selected. I think most managers on a Friday night probably get the best sleep um, because everything's done. I'm a manager that likes to name the side on the Friday, um, barring any injuries or little doubts. And then you're clear in your mind when you go to bed what you know what's expected. The lads will know what's expected of them, um, and it's going out there and perform. And and you know being buoyed by the atmosphere that it's going to be. Um, but it's uh, it's talks cheap. We've got to go out and you know put a performance in that. As I said, it keeps the fans with us because they'll certainly be there for the first part of the game. But we need to put the the, the application, the effort, the the enjoyment, really, excitement of 
you know, getting at teams, um, into them, and you know, hopefully the the it's a it's a two way street, isn't it? I've always said, you know, the players can lift the fans, the fans can certainly lift the players, and we'll only be successful together. And, and the role yourself, you're a manager now, aren't you? You're not the head coach answering to anyone. I mean, does it feel like this is the role that you know? I was always a manager in my own head, <laughs> whether, whether I was, I don't know, head coach, it's only a name, isn't it? But yeah, listen, I, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the challenge, I'm excited about the challenge, there's no guarantees, it's, you know, we've, uh, we've got some really good games coming up, and yeah, but for me, titles, I'm not really bothered, but I get what you're saying, yeah, um, there'll be no certainly, uh, interference from anywhere else, uh, apart from Julian ringing me coming back last night, telling me that one of the lads has scored a few goals today and try to put you know. But no, Julian's a football man. You can discuss football all day with him, but you know he'll never think for one second of telling me when to bring subs on and who to bring on and <laughs> whatnot. So yeah, that would be probably slightly different. Have you spoken to Stefan at all? I've, by text, um, you know, I, I never had any issue with Stefan. When he was at the club, I think the only thing was he was. I think I, I bumped into Stefan prior to Stephen Darby's game against Liverpool early in the season. I had a five minute chat with him there, and I think Stefan said what he's needed to say on the matter regarding obviously the departure of his um, uh, partner, should we say, who was at the football club. Um, and you know, I think, you know, without speaking out of turn, I think everyone knows he's had the wool pulled over his eyes himself. Um, I, I think when I, when I left the last time, I think Stefan quoted that he asked me if, you know, for the reasons, and I couldn't come up with any, you know, obviously, and I, I never spoke to Stefan. So that disappointed me, but obviously he's taken from what, what he got told. So no issues at all, at all with Stefan. I know he's not been to many games, he's obviously still got a keen interest, um, but I think he knows that, you know, in the stewardship, should I say, of Julian, who's at the experience at the club, the club's in good hands, and um, naturally he just wants us to succeed. Does the club feel like it should do again now? Sort of got rid of that yeah, well, I'll I'll tell you in the coming weeks. But yeah, it, it's uh, it's it's as I said, it's um, really exciting times to be back. Obviously, a lot of things have changed. You know, the staff um, as much. You know, there's still a couple of you know the physios and and, and lads, but and, and quickly get to know the staff. It's um, the good professionals. Um, the playing side naturally has, has changed a little bit. Um, the pitch is the pitch, <laughs> um, but yeah, listen, it's, it's being back personally, doing something I love, and if I had a choice of which club I could pick, this would be it, so, um, but it's now, talk's got to stop and we've got to really go out there and um, 15 games, you know, don't, we just want to, you know, win as many as we possibly can, no set targets, no guarantees of anything, just go out, first minute to the last, give everything you've got and let's try to be bring success to this, you know, fantastic football club. One last one, not to get Kenny in with you as well. I mean, was that something you were always determined to do because it's so important to... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, you know, since Motherwell days, Kenny's been with me, you know, I know his experience, he's been at, he's been at football, you know, this season, every every Saturday and every Tuesday, he loves the game, he loves the, he's got good knowledge on it um, and he's a good coach and he's, he's a good ally, but he's not a yes man, you know, he, you know, there's many a time I've changed my team after speaking to him. So it's a, the partnership has worked well in the past, and hopefully it'll work well again. I know he's absolutely delighted to be back. He loved his time here. Um, he thought it's a proper football club. And you walk out there, you know you're you're in a stadium, you know you're in a game, you get the atmosphere, you get the buzz, and we've missed that. Um, so yeah, that was obviously uh, um, a, a key thing to 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 get. And they say, Stuart, you should never go back. Clearly, you've got no reservations about that. I mean, is this the sort of club that, whatever the situation, they ask you to come, you, you're just not be able to say, say no? Okay. Yeah, and probably in hindsight, I probably should have looked more into it about budgets and things like this, but no, it, yeah, it was a, it's, it's an absolute no-brainer. I think, you know, any manager out of work, and again, you know, I saw, saw managers uh, yesterday at the, at the conference, a lot of lads who've been in jobs and are out of work and that and you know I think every one of them would have been in you know for a, 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 to do a job at, the, at this size club in this division you know let's be let's be right if it's done properly this can be a championship club you know I've no doubts about that obviously I'm not saying that's what we're in for but it, it's got the you know the stadium and the fan base which is a key to be a championship club um, obviously 
we were almost there not long ago. And realistically, you know, that's what we've got to aim for to to, to keep pushing up and um, you know get get to where we would like to be.